In this tutorial, we will continue to look at custom fractal indicators Alga Trading Lab. We will show you the properties of the indicators and explain the types of blocks that you will use for creating trading bots in order to build trend filters, trend lines and swing points. You will learn how to define support and resistance levels with our supply and demand indicator, how to program a double top, double bottom price pattern and build fractals on any data. The full package of our proprietary indicators Alga Trading Lab with practical examples is free of charge for students of our course Alga Trading with TS Lab. For selected plans, you will find out the details on our website algatradinglabnet.teachable.com. To claim your free indicators from the package, please check the link below the video. Next is a fractal trend line. This is a very interesting block because you can make trend filters with it and apply it in various trend and or counting trend strategies. What does this block do? Simply put, it builds a trend line on the top or bottom peaks of the last two fractals. So if we build a line on the down fractals, we can observe the following picture. Somewhere there was a fractal, then another fractal. Finally, through these two fractals we get a trend line. In the future, we can try to use this line as a support level for bounce back strategies or breakout strategies. If this is a global trend, you can use it as a filter. When the price goes below this line, we do not buy. And when the price is above the line, we work on the long side. The options can be very different. How does it work in practice? Let's consider the down fractals. We need to untick the checkbox and input bigger values. 100 bars on the left and right to make it look more visible. Run. We see some strange lines, but only at first glance. Let's have a closer look at them now. Here we have the first fractal bottom, followed by the second fractal. And here, when the hundred candle closed, a trend line was drawn through these two fractals. The price rebounded here once and then a second time, building a trend line. After the price broke through this trend line, the market went down. It worked perfectly well here. Let's look at another example. These lines can also be used to determine bullish or bearish markets. When we have this upward slope, it is obvious that our minimums are rising. But if the slope goes down, it shows us that the lows are falling as seen on the chart. We have a trend line built through these minimums. You can also draw conclusions from this. Accordingly, by increasing the size of the fractal, it is possible to identify larger trends. Here is an interesting situation. We had one fractal here, then the second one there. A trend line was drawn through these two points. As you can clearly see, the price has bounced off several times from our trend line. Here you can see a perfect example of the breakout. This block has very interesting functions to help you build and use cool strategies and filters. Ok, let's move on. Fractal Pro is a very interesting block. In previous cases, we have a rigid binding to the time of fractal formation. When using the fractal block, the binding to time is less. Now, what is Fractal Pro anyway? This is essentially the same fractal but it is built by other fractals rather than by candles. It turns out to be a kind of hierarchy. For example, here we have the ordinary standard fractal of five candles. Somewhere else, there is another fractal of five candles. And another fractal here, here and here. 
we will call fractals consisting of candles as fractals of the first order. A second order fractal is a fractal that is constructed from the usual first order fractals. In our example, this one is built from the five fractals of the first order, where the top of the central fractal is higher than the top of the neighboring fractals. This results in a second order fractal. There may be fractals of the third and fourth order. A third order fractal will look like this, and here we have fractals of the first order. Together, they are united by a second order fractal, which are located on the left and right, inside of which are smaller fractals of the first order. The third order fractal will combine the fractals of the second order. Accordingly, by setting this order of fractals, we can determine some serious swing points. Let's look at an example. Let's take five fractals on the left and on the right. For the search, we should designate the first order fractal. Run it and see what it looks like. We already see serious extreme points. For instance, here, the fractal has not yet formed, yet it has over here. It was rather quick. On this side, it had many fractals inside. Let's take the second order fractal. On the chart, we already see less second order fractals under this condition. The last fractal was here. Then the market grew for a long period of time without forming a new fractal. In practice, the fractal pro block can be used as a kind of filter. If the price is trading below a fractal of a specified order, then we are working on the short side. However, if the price goes up, such as here, it is not worth selling short until the price goes back under the line of this fractal. Here we have the same situation. We see that it wasn't worth selling short here either. In all the places where the price was above the fractal line, the long entries wouldn't be very successful. So we have a good filter which would work faster compared to filters using different average values, such as SMA. This filter would be turned on in one candle as soon as the price broke through the fractal line. The Fractal Pro block also allows you to define an up and down fractal. In addition, you can find the previous value. The depth from first to fourth order is added to the usual parameters of the fractal. We also have a block fractal bar number, which can be used to determine the number of central bar. You can think of it as one of your strategies, using it as we did in previous cases. Moving on, let's take a look at two interesting and useful blocks, supply level and demand level. These blocks define support and resistance levels using fractals. In fact, in trading, this pattern is called double bottom or double top. Let's see how they work and find the difference between them and ordinary fractals to better understand how to use them. The first block is the supply level. We'll connect it. Here is a new parameter, which will be referred to as offset. But what is its essence? What does the parameter do? I'm going to draw it first. In fact, the supply level block defines such a situation that is the place where the price bounced off twice. Additionally, the parameter offset sets the boundaries by using the number on which the previous stop may be higher or lower than this level. We know that the price does not always exactly match the level tick by tick, as it sometimes happens that the price does not reach the level or closes above it by a small margin. Accordingly, by setting the parameter offset, we can allow set a certain margin in the location of these two swing points. Let's look at an example of how this works. In this case, we have Bitcoin, so we can enter a bigger value, such as $5. To explain more, let's take another fractal block with the same parameters as for the supply level block. Twenty and twenty. 
run. We can now see the following situation on the chart. Note that when this fractal appeared, Tesla began to look back and search for a 20 candle fractal that it was found here. The difference between them is less than $5. Accordingly, the price came here twice and Tesla drew this level. Here we see that our condition didn't take place, therefore there was no new level. However, a new level of fractals appeared here. See, there was a fractal once, then a second, causing a new level to appear based on their highs. Earlier I tried to describe similar levels of support and resistance through two classic fractals. We can now take one fractal with the current values and the second fractal with the previous values. We can then compare the differences of swing highs between them. In this particular case, this approach would work, though not necessarily in many other cases. Why is that? Simply put, there could be several more fractals between them with different values of highs inside. Accordingly, for a level to be defined, formed here, these two fractals must go in sequence, one by one. When we use the supply and demand block, fractals may not go in a row. The situation is quite acceptable when the first fractal was somewhere else. The price then went down and a fractal appeared here, here and here. Then the price went up and the fractal appeared again. If the price between this point and that point of two fractals was right below, then this level was fixed here, and we can use it in our strategies. Our script will completely ignore everything that was below between these fractals. When we use conventional, classic fractals, this level is impossible to determine. Why? Let's consider the following example. We have one fractal here, the second here, and the third here. At the moment, when an up fractal with the same value forms, we cannot determine our level. We can only compare the values of the last fractal with the previous one. We still have one block left, fractal any data. This is very similar to fractal, except for the fact that this block also determines fractals by any data and is not limited by candles. Let's take the high block and build a fractal on it. we should get the same fractal, which was used earlier. Indeed, we see the same on the chart here. We can also build a fractal on closing prices, thereby completely ignoring the weak shadow of the candles. Finally, we see that the price went up, but the level was formed below by closing prices. We can also take any moving average and find the reversal points. Let's try doing that by connecting and displaying it on the chart. Let's take a longer period, set it to 100 and make the line thicker. Here we see that the moving average reversal began with the number of candles we specified and the level of this break was drawn here. Generally, levels can be built on a lot of other data. In the future, we will talk about how to build scripts and use this level using practical example. For instance, in the future, we will cover MACD divergence using this block, along with many more interesting things in our next lessons. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. To stay up to date with our latest videos and practical tips, Make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the button above the video.